Our topic for this session is orbit trauma. We'll begin with the obligate foreign body you'll shoot your eye out case. This one is not subtle. You can see the abnormal contour of the globe consistent with a globe rupture. There is, of course, significant retrobulbar density as well as gas, as well as significant density within the globe. You can also see the lens is entirely disrupted and most likely some of it is displaced posteriorly. Here we see the offending foreign body, of course the BB, lying there in the retrobulbar orbit and luckily not within the brain itself. You can appreciate the abnormal contour of the globe. It's not particularly subtle, although globe ruptures can be extremely so. And note the retrobulbar gas and hemorrhage and the posterior foreign body. So that is the, again, obligate foreign body. Next case is a globe rupture. This is a more straightforward one due to a direct blow. You can see the abnormal irregular contour of the globe, especially posteriorly. And there is significant proptosis due to the retrobulbar hemorrhage, which you see these wispy densities here in the retrobulbar fat. Again, note that abnormal contour of the globe. Again, not particularly subtle here. You can see the stretching of the optic nerve, consistent with proptosis. So that is a case of globe rupture. Next, an unusual lens displacement. You see here the globe is again irregular and quite clearly ruptured also somewhat proptotic. But here is the lens displaced externally and lying on the medial anterior aspect of the globe. Somewhat unusual case where the lens has flipped outward rather than being dislocated and displaced posteriorly. Many times you'll see these lens displacements lying in the posterior aspect of the globe itself. Note again the irregularity of the globe contour and that displaced lens lying on its medial anterior aspect. So that is a case of lens displacement accompanying globe rupture. Next is a case of retinal detachment. You can see there is a linear filling defect within the globe. Many of these retinal attachments begin peripherally, either far medially or laterally, so this is fairly typical. In addition, note the subluxation of the lens. There is slight posterior displacement of the lens without frank dislocation. And there it is on the movie. You can see medially and laterally there are linear filling defects within the globe, representing the detached retina. The patient does not look particularly myopic, although that is a risk. And note again the posterior displacement, subluxation of the lens. Here it is on the coronal. Very well appreciated there. It is important to look at these on all planes. I think the retinal detachments are better appreciated many times on the coronals, whereas the lens displacement obviously would require the axials. So that is a case of retinal detachment. Somewhat similar is our next case of retinal hemorrhage. You can see this is a retinal detachment 
You can see the linear filling defect similar to the previous case, but on the lateral aspect, there is a lentiform density essentially filling in the space between that detached retina and the outer portion of the globe. So they're again very similar to the preceding case, yet with the added dimension of hemorrhage in this particular case. So that is a case of retinal detachment with hemorrhage. Our next case is a pretty unusual injury, an optic nerve avulsion. This was a direct blow. You can see here the optic nerve is detached from its appropriate position on the posterior aspect of the globe. There is retrobulbar stranding that should call your attention to this abnormality and in addition there is a displacement of the medial orbital wall consistent with a blowout type fracture. So it should be apparent that there is a significant injury here but that specific displacement of the optic nerve could be very difficult to spot. So we'll look at that slowly. We're going top to bottom here. There is the stranding and density extending up to the superior aspect of the orbit. And right there you can see the optic nerve is displaced medially from where it should be inserting in the posterior aspect of the globe. So that is a case of an optic nerve avulsion. Our next case, again an obligate case uh, when dealing with orbit trauma, a straightforward blowout fracture. Of course everyone knows you can't rely on the axials. You can see this one here, disruption in the floor of the orbit and the herniation of orbital fat into the sinus below it. There is also herniation of the inferior rectus muscle, appreciable here as well. This was a big deal in the early days of CT. Back in my residency, the reformats were so poor we had to learn to actually call these on the axials. I think in this day and age, with the availability of good coronals, uh, no one would rely solely uh, on just the axial views. You can see the trapdoor displaced fragment from the orbital floor and the herniation of the orbital fat and the inferior rectus muscle. And there it is on the bone window. You can see fluid in the sinus and there is the orbital fat herniating down into the sinus and the displaced inferior rectus muscle and some retrobulbar hemorrhage as well. On the bone window, you can see that displaced trapdoor fragment quite nicely in the medial aspect of the maxillary sinus. There it is on the coronal, the herniated fat and herniated inferior rectus muscle. and on the bone windows, that displaced orbital floor fragment. So that is a classic inferior orbital blowout fracture. Our last case is a carotid cavernous fistula. You see initially there is cavernous sinus enhancement that is asymmetric and of course the first thing you would want to run and check when seeing that is the appearance of the superior ophthalmic vein which you can see is prematurely enhancing and is significantly enlarged. It's a very nice demonstration of a carotid cavernous fistula. So follow the carotid there and you see a wisp of contrast immediately adjacent to it and filling the cavernous sinus. 
And then, of course, that extends out into the enlarged superior ophthalmic vein. So that is a great case of carotid cavernous fistula. You can see these patients actually frequently will uh, present with chemosis. You can see a little bit of lid swelling overlying that left orbit. So that's a case of a carotid cavernous fistula. And that concludes our session on orbit trauma.